Hi everyone. Today we're going to start working on AC motors, the last part of this module. So we've already learned about DC motors and about AC and DC generators, and now we're finally up to AC motors. To begin with, we're going to be looking at a few different kinds of AC motor. In particular, the brushed AC motor or the standard AC motor, and also the universal motor, which can work on AC or DC power. But first, let's look at the parts that we need to make a motor. Now there are a number of different ways to construct an AC motor. We're going to be looking at a few of them. But all motors, regardless of how they're constructed, have a few elements in common. Uh, these are things that all motors will have, whether AC or DC. So the differences are in the shape and location of these various parts, whether the stator is the magnet or the coil, or whether the rotor is the coil or the magnet, things like that. So every motor must contain a rotor, which might look something like this. So a rotor is the part of the motor that spins, right? If there's no part of the motor spinning, then it's not really a motor. So all motors are required to have rotors if they're going to be classified as such. So the rotor experiences a torque due to the electromagnetic motor effect. If it's not due to the motor effect, then we don't have an electric motor. So uh, we use electricity to produce a torque on the rotor of the motor to make it turn. Now, as well as a rotor, uh, all motors need a stator. So the stator is what remains stationary while the rotor spins. It's usually connected to the frame of the machine, which makes sense because usually we don't want the frame to be rotating. In many motors, uh, the stator will provide the magnetic field. That's why we often call the magnetic field across a motor the stator field, because it doesn't change. Right? You're familiar with this because we've covered it in DC motors. Uh, finally, both the rotor and the stator are usually connected to a ferromagnetic core, so something made of ferrite or iron. So the purpose of the core is to confine the magnetic field inside the rotor, uh, and that will maximize the motor's efficiency. Magnetic fields really like iron and other ferromagnetic materials. So by having a, an iron core, or even a ferrite core, we greatly increase the amount of magnetic flux uh, passing through the motor, and therefore the amount of energy uh, it changes from electric energy into kinetic energy. Uh, remember that we often laminate the iron core, because this reduces the amount of eddy currents that can appear in the core. Laminating a core means slicing it into many parts and dividing those parts by insulators. Now, the standard AC motor looks something like this. It probably looks kind of familiar because we've seen this same diagram uh, in our studies on AC generators. So, a DC motor uses a split ring commutator to reverse the current as it turns, and that means that current is always passing through the magnetic field in the same direction, so the motor always experiences a torque in the same direction. In the case of an AC motor, we do something slightly different. You can see in the diagram that we have a pair of green circles, and neither one of them has a split in it. So these green circles are called slip rings. We don't need to reverse the current through the motor every half turn, because the power source is already doing that for us, right? So we already have a voltage that is smoothly alternating, and that will control the, magnet, the, uh, the rotor of the motor spinning. We don't need to worry about reversing the current every half turn. Uh, one of the disadvantages of this brushed AC motor is that it can only run at a single speed. If the electricity through the coil is not varying at the same rate, 
that the coil is spinning, then the coil won't be able to spin properly. It needs to be rotating through the magnetic field at the same rate that the current through it changes. So if the current through it is 50 hertz, that is, it changes back and forth 50 times a second, then the motor will need to be going around one full revolution 50 times a second. The frequency of the power source and the frequency of the motor's uh, rotation have to match. So it can only rotate at the same frequency as the AC power source alternates. So remember in Australia, our AC power source is usually 50 hertz. Under a heavy load, something that's enough to slow the motor down a bit, uh, it will stop rotating instead of slowing down. Because once its frequency no longer matches up with the 50 hertz of the AC power source, it won't be able to spin at all. Whereas for a DC motor, we would only be slowed down by a heavy load. Now we have uh, a different sort of motor here called the universal motor. It's called universal because it can run on both AC electricity and DC electricity. This makes it quite different from the other motors that we've covered so far. The way that a universal motor is constructed is by uh, placing electromagnets for the magnetic field uh, that are connected to the same current that is led to the rotor, right? So the power source for the motor powers both the rotor, which needs a current in a magnetic field, and the magnetic field itself. So if a DC power source is provided, the uh, the electromagnets will of course have just a constant magnetic field and the motor we get will just be exactly the same as a DC motor. But what happens if we connect an AC power source? Well first let's look at the effects of an AC power source on a normal DC motor. If we supply an AC power source to a DC motor it won't spin continuously. It'll spin partly in one direction and then stop as the power source alternates and then spin back in the other direction. So it'll only turn back and forth, it will not spin continuously. This means that we cannot use a normal DC motor with an AC power source. And the reason that it turns back and forth when we change the current through it is because the magnetic field won't change. So the magnetic field is always pointing in the same direction and then if the current points in different directions, the force will point in a different direction. But what happens if we have a universal motor? If we connect an AC power source to the universal motor, then every time the current changes direction, the magnetic field in the motor will change direction too. Because remember, the magnetic field is produced by electromagnets powered by the same current. So the stator field is created by electromagnets that are powered by AC power, which means we have a changing magnetic field uh, that will match the rate of change of the current in the rotor. So when current's flowing in one direction, it's all well and good. When the current reverses, two things happen. First of all, the current in the rotor reverses and second of all, the current in the electromagnets reverses. And this means that the rotor will always turn in the same direction. Let's look at the right hand rule. If the magnetic field is pointing in this direction and the current is going up, then the force on the uh, rotor will be in this direction. If we reverse the direction of the magnetic field, so it's going that way, and the direction of the current so that it's going that way, the force is in the same direction. So that means no matter which way current is flowing through the universal motor, we will always get the force uh, on each part of the coil, or the torque on the entire coil, going in the same direction. So by changing the direction of the current through the universal motor, we don't change the direction of the torque. Now, one of the disadvantages of the universal motor, because of course they can't be perfect, 
is that they use a split ring commutator, just like a DC motor. And of course, we know a little bit about the problems caused by uh, a split ring commutator. So the commutator will cause the brushes to wear down over time. Every time the brush passes over the split of a split ring commutator, it wears down a little more. And this means that uh, universal motors are not really suitable for use as heavy industrial motors. All right, so that's the end of the theory. We've learned about the various different parts of motors, as well as two types of AC motor. Let's go on to some questions. Question one, which option is not essential for an electric motor? Is it the state of the rotor, the power source, or the pair of brushes? Let's go through our options. If we didn't have a stator, then the rotor wouldn't be able to spin in relation to anything. And without spinning, we can't really have a magnet. Uh, we can't have a motor, rather. So a spinning motor needs a stator as a solid frame to spin relative to. Similarly, we're going to need a rotor. Without a rotor, there's nothing to do the spinning, and so we can't really call the device a motor. If a motor doesn't have a power source, then there's no way to cause the rotor to spin in relation to the motor, in relation to the stator, rather. And so without an input source of energy, we can get no energy out. That's the conservation of energy. Our last option, then, is a pair of brushes, which at first seems odd, because all the motors we've covered so far have brushes in them. However, I haven't listed brushes on the necessary components for a motor, and there's a reason for that. There are some types of electric motor, which we'll be getting onto in a moment, that do not use brushes in order to turn the rotor. And so a pair of brushes is not essential for an electric motor. And D is the correct answer. Question two. What distinguishes a DC motor from a universal motor? Is it the split ring commutator, the brushes, the stator field, or the rotor? So a universal motor is one that can be used with an AC power source instead of a DC power source. But when the DC power source is connected, it behaves in the same way as a DC motor. This means the split ring commutator is the same, the brushes are the same, and the rotor is the same. The stator field is a little different in a universal motor, though. The reason for this is because in a universal motor, the stator field is produced by electromagnets and this is why it can run on AC power. So in a, DC mo uh, in a DC motor, we can use permanent magnets in order to produce the state of field, but in a universal motor, we must use electromagnets. When the state of field changes direction, the current through the rotor will change direction at the same time, so that the force uh, is continuous and doesn't change direction. Question three, what is the purpose of a ferromagnetic core in a motor? Remember that an iron core or a ferromagnetic core was, was one of the parts that I listed that was in most electric motors. Can you remember why that is? Well, the thing about ferromagnetic materials is that they really like magnetic fields. They're very permeable to magnetic fields. And so, a ferromagnetic core will be able to confine the magnetic field so that the change in flux across the motor is maximized. We won't get any change in flux around things that aren't near the core, like the areas just outside the rotor. So the strong magnetic field uh, that's confined there by the ferromagnetic core is able to let a greater force act on the rotor. And this means that the motor is able to produce more torque and drive a heavier load than if it had no iron core, or rather, no ferromagnetic core. Question four. Draw a diagram of a universal motor, clearly showing how it differs from a DC motor. Now remember, the picture of the universal motor will be quite similar to the DC motor, but there'll be one main difference. 
If here's our diagram for the universal motor, you can see that we've uh, clearly labeled that we have electromagnets producing a state or field. This is the main difference between universal motors and DC motors. If we have an AC or a DC power source, uh, it'll produce a magnetic field with the electromagnets and also run through the rotor of the motor. When the uh, direction of the uh, electric current changes at the power source, the direction through the rotor and through the electromagnets will change so that a constant torque is produced. Question 5. Outline the advantages and disadvantages of universal motors compared to standard AC motors. Can you imagine what these might be? Well, one of the big disadvantages is, of course, the split ring commutator. And, of course, the advantages that we can think of are the advantages of DC motors compared to AC motors. So universal motors can run on AC power or DC power. It's why they're called universal motors, whereas standard AC motors can only run on AC power. So there's one advantage that universal motors have against standard or brushed AC motors. Standard AC motors can only run at one speed. It has to be the same speed uh, as the power source is alternating, right? I mentioned before that if you drive an AC motor under a very heavy load, it will slow down so much that the power source will no longer be able to move it. But here's the thing, universal motors use split ring commutators, which means that they won't last as long as standard AC motors. The commutators will wear down more quickly if they're going over split rings than if they're going over the slip rings of a brushed AC motor. So this is the end of the questions. In this section, we've talked about two different sorts of AC motor, the standard or brushed AC motor and the universal motor, which can also run on DC power. We've also talked about some of the essential parts that are found in all electric motors. Mm -hmm.